There's been a ton of talk lately about water changes, and there's a good reason for that. It's an absolutely critical part of keeping a healthy aquarium. But there's a lot of misconceptions about water changes, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to play a little game of water changes, true or false. You need to store water in a tank somewhere prior to using it so that it can be treated. This is false. There's tons of fish keepers out there that are adamant that you need to have some huge tank full of water so you can treat it and get it to exact temperature before using it in a water change. While this is something that's great in a perfect world scenario, it's not required and most fish keepers have a hard enough time finding somewhere to keep their tanks let alone another tank just full of water. There are certain situations where this is a good strategy, like if you're breeding fish and need to use RO water, or if the water out of your tap is disgusting and you've got to get it right before putting fish in it. But for most fish keepers, this isn't going to be an issue. But wait, John, if I'm using city water and I just put it in there and then add my water conditioner later, isn't the chlorine going to kill my fish? No. Whoever you're receiving your water from is required to deliver water that's clean and free of contaminants. They use chlorine or chloramine to accomplish this, but the levels are low enough where they're not going to instantly kill your fish. You have plenty of time to do your work, fill your tank up, and then add the water conditioner, or better yet, just add it while you're filling it up. Just get your water close in temperature, just touch it and you can feel if it's close in temperature, and while you're filling it up, put some drops of water conditioner in there. Or if you're somebody that uses buckets, put some drops in your buckets before you dump them in there. And I promise you, everything's gonna be fine. You have to do water changes every week or your fish are gonna die. Fuck. This is a pretty touchy subject for a lot of fish keepers, but the fact is, if your tank doesn't need a water change every week, you don't need to do one every week. It's the old, if it ain't broke, don't fix it philosophy. You need to do water changes when you need to do water changes. It's that simple. Do you have a test kit? When do you need to do water changes? Well, the best rule of thumb is if your nitrates get up over 20, it's time to start planning to do one. Get some of that nasty water out and replace it with clean water and bring those nitrates down below 10. But here's the thing, if you have a lightly stocked tank and you have a few plants in there and you're not overfeeding your fish, you might be able to go three or four weeks without even doing a water change. The best advice I could give you is to be constantly testing your water and have a good understanding of what your water's doing. Keep a log of your parameters and it'll tell you when you need to change water. It's that simple. Don't do work if you don't have to. And if you need to know where to get the best test kit on the market, we'll put a link in the description below. Doing a water change can get your fish in the mood and entice them to spawn. This is true. Yeah, I'll be honest, I don't really understand the science behind it, but I know that with some fish, this is definitely true, and I've got a story about it. If you've recently found our channel, you may not know that Lisa and I used to have 127 tanks in our garage, and we were breeding African cichlids. We would do our water changes on Sundays, and lo and behold, on Mondays, we would come home from work and there would be 10 to 15 holding females. It was like clockwork. We had so much fun on Mondays just going through and counting them. And the thing is, if we missed water changes on Sundays, there would literally be no holding females. Like I said, our Sunday water changes created spawning every single time. I don't really understand the science behind it, but I know that it's true. Kind of like a Friday night after Lisa's had a bottle of wine. You need to add 
water conditioner, even if you have well water. Ding, 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 true. I've heard it so many times. I have well water, so I don't need to worry about water conditioners. Well, this is true when we're talking about chlorine or chloramine, but what about everything else? Well water isn't perfect. Just think about it. Everything that's in the ground is gonna be in your well water, so a lot of times you can find things like mercury or other heavy metals, and I'm not talking about Metallica. There's even wells that have ammonia or nitrates in them. Even though it doesn't have chlorine in it, it's still got a bunch of stuff that's even more harmful to your fish. Plus, many water conditioners have additives in them to help with overall fish health, so you're not just removing harmful things, you're also adding helpful things. It's kind of a no-brainer. And a bottle of water conditioner will last you a long time, and it's not expensive, so just play it safe and use them. Water changes stress out your fish. False. Let's think about this for a second. If these fish were in the wild, which most of them will never be, but if they were, they'd have things like fishing boats, canoes, people walking around in waders trying to get them in nets, and birds constantly flying over looking for their next meal. And you're worried about your little plastic siphon hose stressing them out? Fish are much more resilient than we give them credit for. We look at them as something that we need to tiptoe around, don't make too many loud noises, and for God's sakes, don't tap on the tank. It may disturb them and stress them out. I mean, haven't you seen the videos of those idiots down in Florida sending fish down some stupid water slide? <laughs> Come on, they're not as delicate as you think. Yes, they might run and hide behind rocks or dart around while you're doing your work, but that's just their survival instincts kicking in. It's not gonna kill them. Plus, they get rewarded with good clean water once it's all done. Who doesn't love that? Oh, and by the way, don't send your fish down water slides. God. I remember when I had my first beer. Grow up. If you're gonna do water changes right, you have to vacuum your substrate every single time. Fuck. Vacuuming your substrate is a really good thing to do because it'll remove all that fish waste and uneaten food that builds up. But you don't absolutely have to do this every time. You could get a system going where you vacuum the substrate on every other water change and your parameters will still be safe. Now obviously it could go the other way too. If your water is foul after two weeks and you do a water change without a gravel vac and it doesn't bring the levels down where they need to be, you know that it's something you need to do every time. Or maybe you've got an algae problem and you need to get all that mom out of there to get it under control. Whatever your situation may be, once you get your tank under control, you don't have to vacuum your substrate every single time unless you need to. Make sense? I don't even do water changes. I just top it off when the water gets low and it's fine. It's the same as doing a water change. I'm gonna surprise you, but this is true. But ugh, let me explain. I'm not saying you don't need to worry about water changes. Just top it off and you'll be fine. Think about what we've been saying throughout this entire video. You should be doing water changes when you need to do water changes, meaning the nitrate levels are high enough where it's becoming dangerous for your fish. Well, if your parameters are fine and your water has gone down a bit from evaporation, you're totally fine just topping it off. And yes, it's the same effect as doing a water change because the clean water is mixing with the rest and giving the fish a little breath of fresh air or water. This doesn't mean water changes aren't necessary and topping it off is fine. I'm just saying sometimes it can be. I fully support the idea of doing the least amount of work possible, but if your tank is disgusting and you're just topping it off, well, then you're doing this wrong. But if you understand how your water works and your parameters will allow it, yeah, just go ahead and top it off. 
And it's better than nothing. The water you add in your water change needs to be the exact same temperature as what's in the tank. Oh. This one is similar to what John was talking about earlier when we were talking about storing water before adding it to your tank. A lot of people are very diligent making sure the temperature of the water is perfect before adding it. I've even seen people put thermometers under their faucet to get it perfect. I'm not saying these people are wrong and foolish for doing what they're doing. I'm just saying it's not completely necessary. When John was talking about us doing water changes on Sundays, I'm still not happy about the wine comment. John is such a child. What he didn't tell you is we used to fill the tanks using the garden hose, which has cold water coming out of it. See, when we first started doing water changes on Sundays, we used warm water from the water heater, but with 127 tanks, that warm water would run out pretty quick. We noticed that a lot of the spawning that was happening was in tanks that were near the end when the hot water had run out. So we decided to just use cooler water on all of them, and what do you know? They all started getting it on. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to use freezing cold water. We're gonna use a little common sense here. All I'm saying is a little bit cooler water isn't gonna hurt anything. So there you go. I hope that this maybe demystifies water changes for you and makes things make a little bit more sense. I sure am enjoying this new format. I hope you are too. If you are, please let us know down in the comment section. And I do want to ask you for a favor here, folks. I really am going to need your help on this. I've just found out that all of my fish, all of them, are going to die unless you subscribe to this channel. We don't want to see all these fish that we've worked so hard on die because you haven't subscribed. So please just click that button down below. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and you get to save all of these lives. Please help us out with that. Anyway, this has been fun. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.